Well, I was going to lead the show today talking about how great it was to soundproof my room. It's an absolutely wonderful thing. It's really easy to do and it just has been a lifesaver for us. Our room goes into the hall, which has this like cylinder of the up and down stairs and it just uses a, like an echo chamber and it just goes throughout the whole house. And uh, man, soundproofing was definitely the solution. But I am gonna complain about my GoPro Hero 5 Black. It stopped working, so today is just gonna be an audio show and not a video show, courtesy of GoPro. Welcome to How to Build a Tent. We are the podcast on how to make you successful. We are coming up on a year of doing the show in a matter of weeks, a year we have been doing this show. I hope you guys have been as blessed as I have been. I hope you guys have been enjoying the show. And I just really appreciate everyone who subscribed, supported the show, reached out to me, and we've had some great conversations. Thank you to all of you guys and gals who've reached out. It's been a great year and I've been so thankful for the opportunity to help you guys truly be successful and hearing your guys' success stories in just a matter of a year. I mean, businesses take two to three years on average to just be able to determine if you have something for it to really be successful. And uh, I've just heard a lot of great stories from those of you who listen, which is just a really exciting thing. So thank you for all of you who've done that. If you want to reach out to me, you can find me, Matt, at howtobuildatent.com. You can find me on all the social media sites, How to Build a Tent. We are also part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network, man. Is this like turning into just an amazing network with amazing shows and guests and material and content, all exclusively for members or a lot, I shouldn't say all of it, because some of it is not, but a lot of the great stuff is exclusive only to members. If you go over to fightlaughfeast.com, put an HTBT in the memo field, you will get a HTBT mug. You may still be able to get a pint glass from the Fight Laugh Feast Network, and then you get tons of other great content as well. So go over and do that, support us, come alongside of us as we are proclaiming the Lordship of Jesus in every area of life, audio and video when it works. All right, what do we want to talk about today? I want to talk about that face app that is storming the internet, which if you have done, uh, you have made a grave mistake, my friends. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about also this article that was incredibly sad. It was the legacy of feminism, really. And we are going to talk about that as well in this woman's article. Before we do, I want to talk to you about this plumber of mine, who, not mine at all, but I bought a product. It's called the Fin Plus P-H-Y-N. And they, I just moved to Florida, so I didn't really know a plumber off the top of my head, but they have some that they will recommend. So I used the recommended one, and he's blown me off for like three times in a row. And I just want to say, like, if you want to be successful in business, you don't blow off customers. He had my business. He was going to get paid, but he's blown me off unresponsive, and now I'm going to go with somebody else that I don't even care if they don't have experience with this product. I'm pretty sure any plumber can figure it out. Plus, it comes with great instructions. This isn't a plumber that is uh, an employee of Finn, but it was someone that Finn recommended, and now you're making Finn look terrible and all that stuff, and, uh, well, you're going to lose our business, future business, and we're going to go with somebody else. Um, so that is just a lesson for you guys. Is don't blow people off. If you can't make it, tell them. If you need to you know, send it out to somebody else, you can just recommend another plumber. I'm my uh, father and brother in construction, and when they, their companies can't uh, fulfill a job with a customer, they don't leave them hanging, they don't ignore them, they will refer them to somebody else that's competent, that's gonna take care of them, so their customer is always satisfied. And that's what you should always be aiming for. You should be aiming to satisfy your customers no matter what the case is. Now I want to talk to you guys about the face app. The Russian face app in fact. Now before we get into the specific thing, the specific warning, and please share this with people that are doing it. If you see them 
doing this, if you see their pictures of them being old and then being young, and what this app does is it takes a picture of you today and will like project in 30 years or something down the road what you'll look like based on their own algorithms on whatever they decide. So it's not even really what you're going to look like. It's what they think you may look like. And trust me, they're not going to be around in 30 years to for you to lodge a complaint that they were wrong about it. But before we get into it, I wanted to say this in general, that we live in a great country where companies are accountable to some degree. Now, some of them try to get away with things. Some of them get away with things for a long period of time. But there are a standard and a code laws in place that other countries don't have, specifically the Russians, specifically the Chinese, and other third world countries. In fact, the Russians and the Chinese are nefarious. They are using companies for many different reasons, including spying on Americans. Now, I want us to be careful with these kinds of apps for not only that reason alone, but when you are giving your face to another company, you're giving them permission to store your face on their servers and to do what they want to do with your face. Just think about how our technology is evolving to use our facial recognition. They will have your thumbprint, your facial recognition, whatever they're using to take from you to do whatever they want. And they're going to be able to use, so you're basically giving them a key to your apps that use facial recognition. You're giving them your face, which you use to unlock your phone, which you use to pay bills, which you use to pay your credit card, which you use to send money on your iPhone or whatever device you use. And that's just going to be more and more common. And you're giving this away. And in this case, you're giving it to a Russian company where who knows who it goes to, who is going to use it. It's just not worth seeing a picture of what you are not going to look like in 30 years because they have no idea what you're going to look like. And this also reinforces how important it is to read your contracts. Now, what are you talking about? There's no contract. I just downloaded it. I clicked accept and agree. And then I went on. Well, what you accepted and you agreed to was a contract that you entered into that allowed a company like this Russian company face app, that was created in 2017. I don't know why it's taking two years for it to catch on, but you have given them permission not only to take that photo of you, but your whole photo gallery. They have all your pictures now. Now, this is what you agreed to. This is part of the contract that you most likely didn't agree to. And again, share this show with your friends that are doing this because this isn't the first time it's happened. Every time you see on a Facebook, like take this quiz to tell what kind of Disney princess you're going to be. A lot of those, if not all of them are wanting your information from your Facebook page and wherever else they can get it in exchange for you to be able to take this app to tell you what kind of Disney princess you're going to be, but they're taking all of your information and they're going to use it to in a way that however they can make money. Remember this golden rule in economics. There's no such thing as a free lunch, Ten Stoffel. And we're kind of spoiled or we're kind of used to the deception. Let me make sure my mic's still up. Okay. We're still used to this deception where we feel like Facebook's free. So everything on Facebook, it's free. It seems free, so we're gonna keep paying it free. It's not free. You're paying with your information. You're paying with your credentials. You're paying with your key, in this case, of how you unlock and pay and send things on your phone. And it's been going on for a long time. These companies aren't stupid. But now, let me read to you what Face apps, terms and conditions specify that every single person that uses it has agreed to. You grant FaceApp a perpetual, irrevocable, non-exclusive, royalty-free, worldwide, fully paid, transferable, sub-licensable license to use, reproduce, modify, adapt, publish, translate, create derivative works from, distribute, publicly perform, and display your user content and any name, usernames, or the likeness. 
And the apps terms reads at times of this publication. So that's what I read at the time of this was this was articles being written up about it, which is the Military Times. That is what you agreed to. And you're giving it to a Russian company that does not have the same standards, rules, and ethics that we do. That is a run by a totalitarian government who is looking for as many ways as it can to influence American culture and American elections. And you're giving them basically a key. And all of your friends that have done it are doing the same. Share the show with them and tell them, like, you got to be careful with what you agree to because you don't know who you're entering into these contractual obligations with. This company is a Russian company around the world. And what do you think the recourse is going to be if they do steal your stuff? What if it happens if they do steal your identity? What if they do use your face to break into your banking system? What's going to happen? Well, how are you going to get your money back? How are you going to get your identity back? You're not. You're not. And you're like, oh, that's not fair. Life's not fair. You should be really wise. You should be as wise as a serpent. You should read your contracts. You should realize that nothing in this life is free, including face apps that are going to tell you what you look like in 30 years. We've got to be smart, guys. Not just in our businesses, not just in our entrepreneurship, but in our personal lives as well. You don't want to deal with that stuff. Seriously, we're not going to even be thinking about this in three or four days. But you're going to might be dealing with this in some way in a year, in two years. Who knows what's going to happen? Hopefully nothing happens. Hopefully I'm just like overly paranoid and nothing's going to happen to this. But I do know that you just agreed to what I read. And I do know that your stuff, your face is now in all of your photo roll, everything in your camera, at least not to maybe contacts, maybe phone numbers, who knows what else is part of it. All of that is in a server in Russia somewhere. I don't want my stuff in a server in Russia somewhere. I don't know about you, but I'm cool with it just staying with me and the people that I agree to on in this country on American soil that I have some recourse with if they violate, I can go through the US system. But what court system are you going to go through when you have a complaint with a Russian company that's probably backed by the Russian government? You are out of luck, my friend. Now, I want to talk about another article that really just broke my heart. And it was called, I'm a working mom and every day I leave a piece of myself behind. And it is from a blog, I think, called scarymommy.com by Danny Graham. And this one really broke my heart because she says, she leads off the paragraph with the, the story with this. Every morning before I leave for work, I cherish sticky, open mouth kisses from my 17th month old daughter, knowing those smooches will be bestowed on loving caregivers for the next 10 hours instead of me. My heart constricts when she cries and reaches for me as I walk out the door. Knowing when I get home at six o'clock, she will be crankly, cranky and nearly ready for bed. As I drive away, I see her chubby dimpled hand pressed against the window and I tear up, wishing I could turn back, scoop her up in my arms and spend the day with her. This is what this working mother's desire is, to be with her child, to spend the day with her. She is going through a traumatic experience leaving her child to go to work. She's a full-time working mother, and every day when I go to work, I leave a piece of myself behind, she says. And she goes on to talk about how she's so thankful for the work that all these women did to get her to a place where she can be a middle-income, full-time worker, making more than her husband. And she's so thankful for the opportunity to be in this place. And it's almost like she has guilt that she can't just be a stay-at-home mom. And she says, it just made sense because of all of the expenses we have, the, the style of living we're accustomed to, that I couldn't not work, that I have to work to pay for the life that I have. There's a few things here. One is, I don't care what other women, other men have done in the past. You need to do what's best for your family. You need to do what's best for your family. And what's best for your children is not to give over raising your children 
to somebody else. God has given you and your husband or your, your boyfriend, hopefully not your boyfriend, hopefully you guys are married, has given you guys the responsibility of fatherhood and motherhood to raise that child. And especially this lady who's writing this article, who's heartbroken, who feels like she has left a part of herself. And she's not doing it for two reasons, she says in this article. There may be more. I'm just taking what she said at her, on her article at face value. Is sure cost of living is too high because they are used to a status of living that has to require both of them to work. And she makes more. And also the guilt of the women's right movement, feminism, I'm assuming is included in that, that has gotten her to a place where she's allowed to work. Now think about that. She is feeling guilty because she has been taught that this has been all good and that what all these women did, the second wave, third wave feminism, equal rights, equal pay, and this whole fight and this whole struggle has all been good. But where has it put her? She has gotten a career. She makes more than her husband, but she says she leaves a part of herself every single day. She leaves her child crying and she's missing her child grow up because she is grabbing hold of the feminist dream to make more than her husband, to be a breadwinner, to be the one that can support the lifestyle that they have grown accustomed to. And I just want to reach out to her and say, is this worth it? Is it? There's so many times in our lives as humans and I'm pulling this out from just her, I'm saying men, women, all of us, that we find ourselves in this cycle and this continual pattern and we just going through the hoops and we realize something's wrong, but we don't stop to think maybe we should fix it. Maybe we should adjust course. Maybe we should change our directory because this just isn't working. And eventually we're riding the bike, the wheels start to loosen, they get wobbly and we just keep going, we get stubborn, we don't think that we need to make adjustments to stop, pull the bike over, tie up those lug nuts, but we just keep going until it all falls apart. And it probably falls apart something like this. Your children are angry and don't listen to you. Like she said, they're fussy at the end of the night when she comes home. You're strained with your husband because you guys aren't happy because you're both at work, you grow apart. You don't have enough time to spend together and work on your marriage because the little time that you have at home, you're spending it with your children. And you grow up and maybe you stay together for 10 or 15 years, but then the teenage years happen and they don't even want to talk to you. And then what do you have left? What do you have left? Your career. And you start spending time in your career and then you start looking for intimacy and then you find it with a coworker, you find it with a client, you find it with a boss and adultery happens and you end up getting divorced, finding the love of your life. And then you repeat the cycle all over again. How many times has something like that to some extent, one way or the other happened to marriages in our country? And it really just comes down to idolatry guys. It comes down to idolatry and you're like, what are you talking about? You, and you think you hear the word idolatry and you think of the like Greeks who would come and the Romans that would go into their houses and you think of Maximus from um, the gladiator and he would go to his little shrine in his house and he would have all his little dolls and he would pray to them. He'd pray to the gods for his wife and children and whoever else he was praying for. But idols don't come in the form of sticks and stones. They come in the form of careers. They come in the form of politics. They come in the form of children. They come in the form of marriages and they come in the form of cars, houses, vacations, and any other things that are forcing you to do things that are advocating your responsibility, that are rejecting the call that God has called on you. And there any of those things that are causing you to do that is an idol. And boy, do we have them. How easy is it to 
put our children elevated to a place they should not be? How easy is it to put our spouse to a place, the fear of our spouse not liking us, not loving us anymore? How easy is it for that to happen? In this woman's case, she has the idolatry of feminism, of work, where she knows that her child is suffering. She's missing out on her child. She is even suffering, but it's not stuff. She's sacrificing to her idol. And we all know what that feels like because we have all sacrificed to idols that we've had to repent of. Hopefully we have repented of. And if you haven't, if you find yourself going down this road like this lady is where you are in pain, if you're suffering, your sin is weighing on you, you are neglecting your responsibilities. You need to throw down those idols, clear them out of the house, and fall to the feet of Jesus and repent and ask him to deliver you from these consequences. What should this woman do? Based on her article, they should downsize. They should get rid of the things that are keeping them from both, from being, from one of them being at the home, from her being at the home. They should find a place to live where she can spend the time raising her child and discipling her child and being with her child. Who cares what people did in the past? Who cares what people said that she should do in the future? Who cares if it's not biblical? If it's not what God wants, who cares? And we see the consequences. You may not even be a Christian listening to this podcast. I don't know. I don't know where you're at. But let me ask you, is that better? Is this woman happy? Now, I know there could be some instances where both parents have to work. There may be, I don't know. All I know is that I would rather live poor and raise my children the way God wants me to raise them to be able to devote time as parents to them. Like I have passed up tons of opportunities and career moves money to be able to work from home and God has blessed me from home and I've been able to do a lot and be able to provide and things like that but I've given up a lot in order to make sure that my children my son and future children are going to have parents that are going to disciple them in the way of the Lord I'm not going to miss out on my child's life I'm not going to miss out on my marriage I'm not going to miss out on what God has called me to do as a father and a husband for my career. It's just not worth it. I threw that idol out a long time ago. I threw that idol out a long time ago. And I hope this it can be a reality check for you guys too. If you find yourselves in this situation like this lady is, like I have been in the past, where I have put idols up in front of God where I have elevated things higher than they ought to be, and I've worshipped them and found myself miserable, agonizing, then I hope that you will repent, throw those idols out, sit at the feet of Jesus, and ask him to show you what he wants you to do in your life. And when that happens... You may give up your career. You may give up the progressive dream, the dream, the feminist dream. But there's going to be so much better for you than anything those things could have ever promised because they're all lies. Whenever your career is an idol, it's a lie. Whenever your marriage is an idol, it's a lie. Whenever your kids are an idol, it's a lie. And it's a lie because they're promising you more than what God has promised to give you himself. And this is what he promises to give you, eternal life. And I'm not talking about just in heaven as far as longevity of never ending, but part of that eternal life is equality, is not, I'm sorry, not equality. I'm, ah, I got the feminism in me. It's the quality of life. And this is what I have found when God is on the throne in my life and I am obedient to him and I am doing what he has called me to do. I am full of joy. I am full of peace. I have happiness. I have fulfillment. I have contentment because God has created us to worship him. And when we do, when we are obey, when we do what we're supposed to do, everything aligns 
and we get to receive that eternal life blessing. And if you are not living in that blessing right now, go to God and ask him to fill you with the spirit and to show you anything that needs to be changed because he will never be a lie. He is truth. He will never let you down. You will never follow God and think, man, I wish I would have held on to that other idol. Man, I wish I would have spent more time in my career and not do what God asked me to do. That has never happened to me once in my life. I testify to that fact to you today that his feet is the best place to be in. Better is one day at his feet than a thousand elsewhere. I hope all of you listening to this experience that truth. Now let's go out and be successful. God bless.